Well, good afternoon or good night. Um, at least it's good night here in Ireland. I just decided on a whim to actually put together a PowerPoint presentation on the issue of baptismal regeneration in the theology of Victorinus, a third, fourth century Christian author whose writings have recently been abused by various Protestants. So. Now, the topic of baptismal regeneration is something I've written a lot about on my blog uh, over the last number of years. In fact, I've been studying baptism and its theology and its development in early Christianity and other topics since I started getting involved in religious studies and debate since I was like 14 years of age. I'm 35 now, so this is something that's a huge topic for me. That's something I love to discuss. So. Uh, I decided to actually put together some notes based on some blog posts um, over the last couple of months where I've been delving in and out of the writings of this fellow, Gaius Marius Victorinus, 29364. So I will just, um, yeah, this is the thing about doing it. I will stop my video, but I will also make sure I can go in full screen. So. This is baptismal regeneration in the writings of Gaius Marius Victorinus, 390 to 364, and on the left is an icon of Victorinus. So why is there a debate? Uh, to give you an example from online literature from uh, a reformed Protestant, Matt Slick, Early Church Fathers on Baptism and Salvation from 2011, he actually references Victorinus as an early Christian writer against the doctrine of baptismal regeneration. And he actually references, as do many others, his epistle to, on the uh, his commentary on the epistle of the Galatians. Also, um, and I don't mind saying this, James Hazelton, who's an absolute idiot, copies and pasted recently from uh, Matt Slick's webpage, which kind of shows he didn't really interact with or check his sources. So the question is, did Victorinus actually reject the doctrine of baptismal regeneration? Because if you study writers who even theologically would reject it, such as William Webster, pages 95 to 96 of his book from 1995, The Church of Rome with the Bear of History, he admits from the second century onwards, it was unanimous amongst early Christians that baptismal regeneration was being taught and affirmed. So this is from Victorinus's commentary on Galatians. Commentary on uh, Galatians 3, 27. For whosoever of you has been baptized in Christ has put on Christ. This means you are sons of God in Christ. What is the sense of the phrase in the Christ? That whosoever is baptized in Christ is now a son of God. For whosoever is baptized is baptized into Christ. And one who has been baptized in Christ has put on Christ. For whosoever is baptized has Christ and is now in Christ insofar as he has Christ. Insofar as he has Christ, he is a son of God because God because Christ is Son of God. So in this passage, Victorinus teaches that the instrumental means of being regeneration, of being regenerated, becoming the adopted sons and daughters of God and so forth, is done through the instrumentality of water baptism. What about his commentary on Re Revelation, which comes from volume seven of the Antinocene Fathers series by Schaff? Commentary on Revelation 1 16. Moreover, they ask that their reproach may be taken away, that is, that they may be cleansed from their sins, for the reproach is the original sin which has which is taken away in baptism. And they begin to be called Christian men, which is, let thy name be called upon us. So water baptism is the instrumental means by which original sin is actually remitted. On Revelation 7, 9, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man was able to number, of every nation, tribe, and people, and tongue clothed with white robes. What that great multitude out of every tribe implies is to show the number of the elect out of all believers who, being cleansed by baptism in the blood of the Lamb, have made their robes white, keeping the grace which they have received. So Victorinus teaches that the instrumental means of the application of the meritorious cause of salvation, the atonement of Christ, is water baptism, which of course is part and parcel of the theology of baptism regeneration in various traditions. On Revelation 15.2, standing upon the sea of glass, having harps, that is, they stood steadfastly in the faith upon their baptism, and having their confession in their mouth that they shall exult in the kingdom before God, let us return to what he said before us. Adverse Arium. Now, this, these are the Latin and English texts I'll be uh, quoting. I'll just reference though the English when I might go through this particular section. Adversus Arium 117, 
The whole force of the mystery is in baptism. His power is in the receiving of the Spirit that is the Holy Spirit. Since this is so, it was said, you're in the Spirit that is what whom the Holy Spirit gave you. At verses Arium 120, let us indeed pass to other texts that in Christ is this creation, but not one creation. For there are three creations. One indeed when all things are created through Christ. The second creation is our own in Christ according to the baptism. But in Christ, and there was another transformation in Christ, whence it was said, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. That Christ existed before he was in the flesh. He who did not know sin, he was made sin for us, because there was a time in which he did not know sin before he was in the flesh. At verses Arium 3.16, Therefore it was said in the Acts of the Apostles, John baptized with water, but you, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, because he pours himself out on them to bring them knowledge. For they have been already sanctified by baptism, under the invocation of God, of Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. And indeed, this was the, thus expressed, sanctify them in truth, and the truth in Christ, the paraclete, is also the spirit of truth. Therefore, everyone who is baptized and says that he believes and receives faith, receives the spirit of truth, that is, the Holy Spirit. And he's made holier by the Holy Spirit. And for that reason it was said in the Acts of the Apostles, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, not for sanctification, but for knowledge and for those things which Christ promised in the gospel concerning the Holy Spirit that is concerning the paraclete. And at Ephesus, his commentary on Ephesians. Uh, this is the Latin text. Now, because I don't have formal training in Latin, and to avoid an incruder, I did use a machine translation of the Latin. So if it's a bit wooden, that's why. 117. It is in these that he sanctifies, they are in the mystery of the name of Christ through baptism. Therefore, I ask that you may remember and know this great benefit, that we may cry and ask that a spirit may come to us that will teach us these things. 5.8. For once you were in darkness, but now light is in the Lord. Therefore, that they should separate themselves in every kind from the sons of unbelief, he says, for what they were before when they lived as Gentiles. You are in darkness, he said, he who follows Christ is light. For whoever is baptized in Christ receives this light. 5.27. He had continued, however, to show what Christ had accomplished, that he gave himself up to cleanse the church in the washing of water and in the word. Of course, that has accept every faithful church and everyone who has received baptism. He is taken in faith that he is built by the washing of water and by the invocation of the word. So in conclusion, Victorinus does affirm the doctrine of baptism and regeneration in his works. This also shows the importance of reading the primary sources. Here are the commentaries and theological treatises of Victorinus, and not snippets and or copy and paste from websites such as Kerm. Sorry, James Hazelton. Thank you for listening.